Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. An invincible fighter has his faith shaken after accidentally causing the death of an opponent during a fight. Now he will need to embark on a long journey to pay for his sins in search of forgiveness. Today we will recap the story of the 2016 movie called, Boyka, Undisputed. In an underground arena in the city of Kiev, Ukraine, famous wrestler Yuri Boyka practices his prayer ritual before starting a new fight. When he enters the ring, he is determined to defeat his opponent and will stop at nothing to achieve his goal. With precise and powerful blows, he manages to take down the opponent easily and is given a standing ovation. In the maximum security prison Kornia Cholmy, underground fights are also carried out. Koshmar, Russia's most monstrous fighter, makes his way to the ring to annihilate his next victim. His opponent even tries to take him down, but his punches and kicks are not able to have any effect against Koshmar, who decides to attack him back and, in a few blows, is able to knock him out. After knocking down his opponent, the madman grabs his neck and starts punching him in the face. And after receiving several punches, the man dies. A few days after his last fight, Boyka goes to church to donate some books. During a conversation, the priest thanks the man for the help that the man has given the church, but assures him that if he seeks salvation, this is not the way. Despite knowing that fighting is Boyka's profession, the priest says that, for God, violence is never the solution and he will never approve of Yuri's actions. However, the man counters by saying that God gave him that gift and it would be a sin to waste it. Later, Kirill, Boyka's manager, shows up with good news. The man claims he got a legalized fight for him to participate. The tournament will take place in Budapest during a European championship, and Kirill convinced the tournament's scouts to watch Boyka's next fight. That night, Boyka will face Victor and the winner of that duel will be qualified for the European Championship. After his prayer, Boyka heads to the ring. Then Victor appears and the referee announces the start of the duel. Victor starts to attack. But Boyka manages to dodge his punches and goes for the opponent with his punches followed by powerful kicks. A few seconds after the start of the fight, he manages to knock his opponent down, however, Victor gets up. Apparently, he's not willing to lose that battle. With total fury, the man lands several blows on Boyka, but the unbeatable soon regains control of the fight and takes his opponent to the knockout. However, seconds later, Victor gets up and decides to continue the fight. Boyka soon manages to take him down again, as the man no longer has the ability to defend himself. Boyka asks him to stay on the ground because he doesn't want to hurt him anymore. However, Victor needs to qualify for the European Championship, so he decides to continue. So, Boyka needs to deliver the final blow, leaving Victor totally unconscious and becoming the winner of that duel. The scouts are proud and report that in just two weeks he will participate in the tournament in Budapest. If he wins the tournament, he will enter the professional league, but if he loses, his dream will be over. Kirill is proud of his fighter, as Boyka was about to fulfill a big dream. The man hands him a package containing the payment for that fight and leaves. On his way home, Boyka sees Victor being taken to the hospital on a stretcher and the nurse claims the man is in serious condition. The next day, during a conversation with his manager, he finds out that Victor died a few hours after the fight. Kirill states that Boyka will not be held responsible as what happened was an accident. At that time, the fighter remembers the words the priest said to him and feels very guilty about what happened. Boyka asks to see the things that were in Victor's closet and there he finds a picture of the man with his wife inside an envelope containing a letter. Shaken by the situation, he asks his manager to get him a fake passport so he can go to Russia to visit Victor's widow. Kirill tries to dissuade him from this idea, after all, Boyka is wanted there, but the man assures him that he has to do it and will be back before his trip to Budapest. In Russia, Victor's family and friends say goodbye to him. Zaurop and his gang show up at the church and Alma is uncomfortable with the gangster's presence at her husband's funeral. The man looks at her from afar and, at the end of the ceremony, reminds the woman about her husband's debt. Zaurop assures her that if Alma agrees to marry him, the debt will be forgiven. However, she claims instead that she will work at his club and pay off the loan he had taken out. That same day, Kirill hands over the fake passport to Boyka. The man takes a ride from Sumi which takes him to a military checkpoint. The soldiers there don't have access to the internet, so if Boyka doesn't draw attention, he'll be able to get through with no problem. After crossing the border into Russia, the fighter goes to Dravni, where he rents a room. In his suitcase, the man carries a crucifix, which he hangs on the wall of the room. Then he walks over to the return address that was on the letter. Arriving there, he realizes that the place looks like a school. As he watches outside, he spots Alma and immediately recognizes her. The woman notices Boyka's presence and stares back at him. Seconds later, a car appears and the driver orders Alma to accompany him. As they leave, Boyka asks security where they are going. The man then heads to the address and discovers that Alma was going to work in an underground arena. 
The moment he enters the club, there is a fight going on between Igor and another guy. Despite being less muscular than his opponent, Igor is extremely agile and manages to beat him with some ease. When his opponent is writhing on the ground, Igor delivers the final blow and lands a kick to his face. As he celebrates his victory, Boyka spots Alma and walks towards her. The woman asks why he is following her and the man claims that he has come a long way to talk to her. During the conversation, Slava and his security team show up and the man orders Alma to go back to work. He then shows his gun and says he wants to talk to Boyka outside. Zaurop is in his room watching the security camera images and, at that moment, he sees the fighter. He recognizes him immediately and is curious to know what that man is doing in his arena. Outside, Slava orders the man to leave and claims that he messed with the wrong woman, as Alma now belongs to his boss. However, Boyka insists he needs to talk to the woman and asks what time she gets off work. Seeing that the man does not intend to leave, Slava orders his colleagues to teach him a lesson. Then, the two bouncers team up to beat him up, but Boyka easily gets rid of them. Seeing the man's abilities, Slava points a gun to his head, but the fighter manages to neutralize it and knocks the enemy down. After unloading the weapon, Zaurop appears with his men and applauds Boyka's performance. The old man proposes that he fight in his ring, but Boyka claims he is not interested in the proposal. The man tells him that he is there to talk to Alma, and upon hearing this, Zaurop is extremely angry. He says that no one approaches that woman without his permission and claims that Alma belongs to him, as does the entire city. Finally, he threatens Boyka saying that if he tries to talk to Alma one more time, he will be a dead man. But that's not enough to intimidate him and in the next morning, he goes to try talk to the woman again. The security guard sent by Zaurop to guard the community center tries to stop him from entering, but Boyka is able to knock him out with a single punch. When he finds Alma, the woman is reading a book to some children, but, seeing him, Alma goes to him to find out what that man wants with her. So Boyka finally has the opportunity to talk to the woman and tells her that he met her husband. He then says he is very sorry for her lost. Alma thanks him and Boyka asks if Zaurop is bothering her. At that time, the widow says that the man took out a loan so that she and her husband could open that community center. As her husband died, Alma started working for Zaurop to pay off the debt. Then the woman asks Boyka to tell her how he met Victor and the fighter reveals that he was responsible for his death. Even though it was an accident, he feels guilty and wants to hand over the fight money to Alma. However, the widow claims that she doesn't want that blood-stained money and orders the fighter to leave. Determined to pay Alma's debt, Boyka goes to Zorab's club and offers to fight in the ring in exchange for the woman's freedom. The deal is that Boyka will participate in three fights in one week. If he wins all the duels, Alma will be free of his debt, but on one condition. The fighter must defeat the great champion of Zaurop. Yuri accepts the deal and says he will leave to duel with Igor in the final fight. Finally, he asks if there is anywhere he can train and Zaurop says that Boyka can use the gym which is five blocks away. Before the fighter leaves, the gangster asks the man not to forget that, in his arena, he makes the rules. When he arrives at the gym, Boyka starts training and soon one of those freaks goes to him to look for trouble. After some provocations, Boyka gets stressed and kicks the stupid guy in the face, who falls unconscious to the ground. That night, he prepares for his first fight against Boris Tarsov. Early on, Boris demonstrates more agility, but Boyka is extremely skilled and manages to compensate for this disadvantage. While watching the show, Zaurop is surprised by the man's performance. Despite knowing Boyka is famous, he had never seen the unbeatable fight live. A few minutes after the start of the fight, Boyka is declared the winner and Zaurop congratulates him on the victory. While resting, Alma goes to bring him a glass of water. At that time, Boyka asks if the woman knows of any other place he can train, as the gym at the end of the street was full of rats. So Alma asks him to go to the community center the next day as she will allow him to use the gym there. The next morning, Boyka shows up and, as agreed, the woman lets him use the gym space where her husband used to train. Minutes later, some kids show up to watch him as he trains. Two nights later, the fighter presents himself for the second match. This time, he will have to face two opponents at once. The Ozerov brothers surround their adversary and attack him together like hungry lions. However, one by one, Boyka manages to take them down with his impeccable punches and kicks. The duo gets up and continues to attack him. While Boyka is distracted by one of the brothers, the second takes a precise kick to his lower back and the man struggles to walk. However, upon seeing Alma looking at him, the fighter returns to the fight and manages to defeat both brothers at once. Injured, he hobbles out of the arena and Alma decides to help him. After the fight, when Boyka returns to the community center, the woman prepares an herbal paste to rub on his back. While tending to the fighter's injuries, Alma states that he doesn't have to fight for her and can leave the city whenever he wants. 
Boyka then asks why Alma didn't leave and the widow claims that that place was her and her husband's dream. Without the community center, those kids would be in gangs or worse. Annoyed, the woman leaves and the man returns to his room to rest. With great fear that Boyka will win the third fight, Zaurop offers police officer Koichev money to get Koshmar out of prison and take him to fight at his club. The policeman shows resistance in doing this, as he will be risking his job. But Zaurop guarantees that, in addition to the money, he will give the policeman one of the most wanted fugitives in all of Russia. Upon learning that he will be able to capture Yuri Boyka, Koichev accepts the deal and promises that he will take Koshmar to participate in the last fight. The morning before the duel, while running to warm up, Boyka receives a call from Kirill. His manager says the arena is full of fans waiting to see him and his name is scattered all over the newspapers and billboards. After the duel against Igor, the fighter should take the bus that leaves at 9.45 at night. On the phone with his manager, the man promises he will be there. A few hours later, Boyka enters the arena for his final match. Igor is confident, after all, he never lost a single fight in that ring. Igor starts the fight at an advantage. Boyka is already tired as this is his third fight in a week. Also, the pain in his back limits his movement. However, he still manages to keep up with his opponent and exchange kicks with him toe to toe. While the fight doesn't come to an end, Alma is anxious in the audience. Boyka's victory means his freedom, but the woman knows he's not at his best. After a few minutes of fighting, Igor knocks his opponent to the ground and grabs his neck. Boyka throws his body backwards in an attempt to get rid of him, but Igor soon stands up and lands a spinning kick to his face. After taking him down, the opponent lands a heel kick on Boyka's spine. Then he grabs him by the neck and gives him several blows to his back. When he is about to lose the fight, Boyka is seized with fury and his true abilities come to light. No matter how much Igor tries to fight back, he can't get over it. After a sequence of synchronized punches and kicks, the unbeatable honors his name and knocks out his opponent. At this moment, Alma can barely contain her happiness and Boyka feels relief that he has managed to fulfill his mission. Now he has to run to catch his bus back to Ukraine. However, Zaurop has other plans for him. As Boyka prepares to leave, the man states that in order for Alma to be free, the fighter needs to beat the champion, as he said in the deal. Otherwise, the woman would continue with the debt. Everyone knows that when he said, my champion, Zaurop was referring to Igor. But in addition to being a cowardly freeloader, the gangster is also a terrible loser and decided to change the deal at the last minute. Now, in order for Alma to have his debt forgiven, Boyka will have to beat Koshmar, better known as the Nightmare, who came straight from prison to participate in the tournament. The man is twice the size of Boyka, and despite the well-aimed blows he receives, Koshmar remains standing. He grabs Boyka by the neck and headbutts him hard. When his opponent is stunned, Koshmar needs him in the chest and knocks him to the ground. But Boyka quickly gets up and continues the fight. He lands a few hits on his opponent, but nothing has enough effect to weaken him. After receiving several blows to the head in a row, Boyka faints for a few seconds, but does not abandon the fight. Seeing the happiness on Zorab's face and Alma's despair, he gets up. After landing a few more punches on his opponent, Koshmar knocks him to the ground again and Boyka can barely stand due to the pain in his spine. With difficulty, the unbeatable gets up and lands a series of kicks in the face of that monster. After several punches, he manages to destabilize Koshmar with a hook and knock him to the ground. He then uses Jiu-Jitsu techniques to immobilize him while twisting his arm. When the man stands up, Boyka uses a kick to send him out of the ring and, incredibly, wins another fight. However, Zaurop, again, doesn't keep his word and sends his guards to attack the fighter. Meanwhile, the cheater grabs Alma and takes her along with him to her room. Customers are scared of the situation and run away from the club in despair. Seeing that Alma is in danger, Boyka gets up, picks up the baseball bat and knocks out the guards. As the fighter eliminates everyone who gets in his way, another security guard appears and shoots him in the arm but Boyka throws the wooden bat towards him and knocks him unconscious. Then Slava appears and shoots the man in the knee. Luckily, Boyka finds a gun on the ground and shoots back. At that time, Slava falls from the second floor and passes out. After taking a weapon that was hidden in the drawer of his room, Zaurop returns to kill Boyka and uses Alma as a hostage. The coward tries to run away, but the fighter goes after him and points the gun in his direction. Realizing that his life is in danger, Zaurop orders Boyka to drop the gun and threatens to kill the woman. The man then drops the pistol and, at that moment, Alma bites the old man's hand. Boyka takes advantage of the distraction to attack him and ends up getting shot in the abdomen. Still, he manages to grab the gangster and punch Zaurop in the face several times. Then he chokes his neck until he kills him. After eliminating that demon, the man falls to the ground and Alma tries to convince him to go to the hospital. However, Boyka says he needs to ask her something. 
The fighter says that, on the day they met, the woman asked him what he wanted from her and at that time Boyka didn't really know what to answer. But now he knows what made him go to Russia was the need to ask his wife's forgiveness for what he had done to her husband. Hearing this, Alma doesn't know what to answer and insists on getting him out of that place, but the police car soon appears and the officers handcuff Boyka. Before getting into the vehicle, the man asks once again if Alma forgives him and she still doesn't know what to say. After six months incarcerated in the maximum security Cornea Cholmi prison, Boyka receives an unexpected visitor and is surprised to find Alma. The man did not expect to see her there and asks how the children at the community center are doing. The woman says they're all great and shows him some drawings they made for Boyka. Then Alma apologizes for not going to visit him sooner, but now she felt prepared. She says that the first time she saw him, she didn't know what to say or do. The woman was blinded by hate, but Boyka showed her that there is still good in the world. That's why Alma went to prison, to tell him that she forgives him and to thank him for giving her freedom back. Hearing this, the fighter feels at peace again and thanks the woman before heading back to his cell. Even in prison, Boyka continues to do what he does best and remains unbeatable in underground street fights. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.